Hey viewers, how's it going? My name is Devotable Halo HD. Today I am joined by Triadic Brush. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm pretty good. So first of all, we're going to ask, I'm going to talk about something different and that's your gamer tag. Now I believe you spell it multiple, you spell it uh, different ways for a lot of times. Yeah, depending so upon what clan I'm in. All right. So, do they both equal the same? Like, basically, they both sound the same, or no? Um. Yeah. It's either triadic brush or triadic bush. All right. And is there a reason behind why they're always different? Um. I put. I I originally put. Um. Okay. So the first clan that I joined, where I changed my gamer tag, was a clan called United Factions, mm -hmm. and that was like four years ago. And so I put. I had enough space in my original name. Uh, which was Tridic Brush 303 to put UF Tridic Brush and, and remove the numbers at the end. And then when I joined a clan that was like U and R, I had to remove a letter somewhere in my name. So I chose the R, and, and that's why it's it's either Tridic Brush or Tridic Bush. All right. So we're going to move on to the first question. When did you first join the Halo Clan community? Um, Let's see. Um, about four and a half years ago, I think. All right, and what clan did you join exactly, or how did you find that clan too? Um, the first one that I joined was the the first. Uh, I mean, the first one that I was ever in was a was a little friend clan, and that wasn't really anything big or special. Um, but then off of that. The, the clan leader's friends, I joined a clan called Delta Force, and they were a uh, professional uh, sniper clan, a sniping clan. And, um, and that was the first, that was the first um, bigger clan that I was a part of. All right. Uh, so this clan, uh, Delta Force, was it ran by a guy named Illusion X Marine? It, or someone no. Similar? Do you know exactly who the leader was? Yes, it was, um, what was his name? His name was Little JJ Reporter. Alright, so <laughs> those are the same people, <laughs> exactly. They and, are? Uh, they, it's just a little, let on a little fact, in the top five worst clans, they were listed as number two on my list. <laughs> awesome! <laughs> Alright, so what did you do, what did you do after Delta Force? Or was there anything important that happened in Delta Force? Not really. It was kind of my first real, first real clan. Um, but after Delta Force, um, I met a clan called United Factions, and that was led by Beefy Muffin. And I was in that clan for about nine months. Um, I had a lot of fun there. I met a lot of cool people. Um, and back then, you know, when there were so many people, so many more people playing Halo Reach, um, the clan had like 150 people. And I, I made it to a two-star general, and then I left. <laughs> All right, so why did you decide to leave? Um, I don't know. I remember I called up the leader, and I said, you know, I, I just, I, I want to do something different. I think it was because I wanted to do something different, because I've been in there nine months, it was my third clan, um, and I just wanted to uh, try leading my own. Alright, and so you didn't create your own clan, and what clan was that? Um, it was called 4 Ace. Alright, so how well was that clan? It was it was good. I mean, it was my first clan that I ever led. We We had like 40 people, 50 people. Um, it, it was around for like a month and a half. Oh, uh, the Joker Nation, you know them, right? Yes. Yeah, we, uh, we fought them, <laughs> and they pretty much destroyed us in, like, media and everything, because we didn't have anything fancy, and, um, I think there's a video about us on, uh, on YouTube, about them destroying our capital or something, but it was, it was all right. <laughs> all right. So... What happened towards, or what ha what happened basically during your clan? Anything big else happened, or did you just like, or was your clan ruined and you decided to like basically give up? No, um, we fought, uh, we fought the UF, 
which was the clan that I, you know, came from after that. Um, we fought them. We fought the UN. Um, and I just kind of got bored of it, just just being the same thing, just being the, the president. I just kind of got bored and just, just kind of ended it slowly. All right. So is there – so obviously there's more clans that you joined later on after that. And uh, what clan – was it after that basically um <sighs> see i can't i can't really remember i've been in so many that at that point in time i can't really remember where i went after that but i think the next major one i was in was actually you know i think i joined um you know it michelle yes I joined her clan, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was SUC, and uh, I was the VP, and I led a squad, and that was fun. All right, so I'm thinking it's safe to say that your next big clan was probably the United Nations? Yes. All right, so what inspired you to join the UN? Um... <laughs> I looked at, I loved, first of all, I loved uh, the way that the ranking system went and the emblems. Um, I loved that you could see, like, not only the service tag, but you could see what someone's rank was, you know, looking at a game. Um, I liked the way that it was ran. I liked all the branches, especially the National Guard. Um, I saw, I pretty much saw every single one of the videos JB had uploaded, um, and it, it just looked like a, a great clan that I wanted to move up in and be a part of. All right. And so what happened during your time? Were you part of any, like, great wars or significant events within the United Nations? Um, I was there when it ended. I was there for JB's speech when it ended. Um, I was there with... Um, I was there when... Some of the leaders were weren't quite at their best, and it was kind of at a decline. Um, honestly, I can't really remember if I was. I know I was in a lot of raids, but I can't really m remember if if I was a part of any of the bigger ones because it was you know so long ago. Um, but um, I made it to. Uh, I was there when ACL Overlord. He was he was noted in their clan as a bigger uh, bigger guy there. Um, I was in their National Guard, um, and I was in their Navy and their Army. Oh, you know what? Um, I was I was doing a research team for JB. I brought it up to him, and I I I actually had a couple of um, of Falcon bomber things that were really cool back then. Yeah. All right. So, uh, when back in the day, I'm pretty sure a lot of people kn knew who you were, or sort of knew who you were. Do you think that a lot of people knew who you were exactly? Um, no. All right. And uh, were you around the UN when Shadow Sniper was there? Unfortunately, no. All right. So. Going towards the end, you said uh, one of the biggest scenes you was there was JB's speech. Uh, what exactly happened in the speech? Um, he said he was... I remember exactly. He was... There was about ten of us in the game. We were all dressed in white. And um, he sat on top of a rock with, with an en energy sword. And he sat there and he... Well, stood there and he talked to us about how... Um, it was time for the UN to end, and it was time for everybody to move on. And and um, he didn't think that the UN should move on um, from where it was. I have I actually recorded his speech, <laughs> and I have it somewhere. All right. So JB wanted the UN to not continue, but obviously later on, uh, I believe I encountered you personally with the the gamertag UN Triadic Brush. And I believe you guys started your own UN, right? Yeah. We, um... After it ended, I, of course, wanted it to continue because it, it was an awesome clan. And, uh... We... 
we started um, the, the United Nations Global, and it was the same everything except different name, just to honor the, the real UN. Um, and uh, me, there was a voting that went on on who the clan le leader would be, and uh, it wasn't me. I was the VP. I got outvoted because my speech was terrible. And uh, and this guy named Undefined Thunder became the uh, the president of the clan, and then I I left like two weeks after, so I didn't like the way he did things. But yeah. Now there was also multiple uh, remnants of the UN being created. The UNR was created at the time your UN was created around that time, and there was also a UN director around at the time. So, yeah. Basically, uh, which UN do you believe succeeded the most out of all of them? All out of all three. Out of all three, counting the original. Uh, counting like uh, UN directors, your the global and the UNR. Oh, UNR for sure. All right. So, did you have you ever heard of from like anything what happened towards like later on afterwards of uh, what happened to the UN global or once you left? Um, it went on for at least another two months, but I didn't really care about them. All right. So, what clan did you join afterwards, or did, were you even in any clan for a while? Um. See after the UN. After the UN, gee. I think I started up my own clan again, which was called uh, Unified Military Command (UMC). And um, and I think it was that. And I think I merged after that. It was I was just in that clan for like a couple of weeks, and after that I merged into Ling Ling's clan (UNR). At right. the beginning of his of his clan. All right. So, how long were you in UNR for? Um, I think I was in there for. I don't know. A long time. Maybe. Right. I don't know. All right. So, was there any major events or any wars that you participated in within UNR? Uh, yes, I was there for the entire first generation. Um, I did, I did all of the wars. We we went straight to uh, well, not straight to Halo Four. We we pretty much went to Halo Four, and that's where all the wars were. Um, we did wars with um, Juicy Parrot. Do you know him? Yep. Uh, yeah, we battled him. Uh, we battled, uh, uh, I think, General Chariot's clan. Um, which was U U F no U F F. Um, we took on a lot of clans that wanted to. I can't necessarily remember their names, but a lot of clans that were out to to take on smaller clans and and stuff. All right. Now I believe there were also like some war events between the U U F or N R I. Yeah. So. Could you explain what happened during those times? Okay. I'm sorry. Can you repeat that? So, during the times of the NRI, how was it like to be in the UNR? Um, honestly, I can't remember. It's all right. <laughs> I, there's so many things to remember. I can't remember that. All right. It's no problem. So, later on, uh, was there a reason why you decided to leave the UNR? Yes. Um, at the time, there was somebody named R Lizard who I hate so dearly right now. <laughs> and uh, Ling Ling Killer and R Lizard were were friends. They were good friends. I think they met in in UN. And um, yeah, they met in UN. And um, at the time, Ling Ling showed favoritism to R Lizard um, and a lot of other people. And one of the biggest reasons I leave clans is because of favoritism. Highly despise it. Um, he showed favoritism to him, and just he wouldn't back me up. You know, I was the I was the vice president, um, and I had done a lot for the clan, and and people, uh, uh, some of the members would disrespect me, and uh, and Ling Ling didn't have my back, so I left. 
All right. So where did you go? Like, where did you go afterwards? After the UNR, I think I went to Halo Reach, and I think that's when I joined Navcom. All right. So that was one of your first UNSC clans, I believe. My very first UNSC clan, yeah. How was your experience within Navcom? It was it was different. Um, I had a friend there who got me into the ODSTs directly. I wasn't a Marine first; just went straight to ODSTs. And um, and their oh man, their ODSTs weren't weren't that good at the time. Um, but I uh, I noticed that there weren't many Marines around. There were maybe like three that I've I've ever saw the first week and a half I was an ODST and upon graduating the ODST uh, boot camp I asked um, Major A. Silva if I think that was his name if I could transfer down to the Marines to help him out and he agreed so I went down to the Marines and um, and after a couple of days um, I got promoted to the OPSO of the Marines and then soon after that, the CO at the time was inactive, and uh, he got kicked out or left or something. And so the XO moved up to the CO, and I moved up to the XO. And this all happened in the first two, three weeks of me being in NAVCOM. It was just, it was so fast. Um, and still then, we had 10 Marines. And then, um, and then Spur, he was the CO above me, he, um, he stepped down and wanted me to be CO, so I went to CO, and uh, and then I turned it around, and we had like 80 Marines at, at one point, but they all sucked, and I sucked as, as being a, a leader back then, and, and I changed my name to Nicholas Strauss, as a lot of people know me by, and and hate me for it, um, and honestly, it was a really shitty four months for me there. I didn't make a lot of friends, and... and uh, I went for uh, quantity over quality. All right. So how long exactly do you remember being... Oh, it was four months, right? Yeah, four months. So did you... Did you so I'm guessing you left, obviously, after four months. I... Yeah. Uh, was there... Did you like the UNSC community that much compared to the military, or no? Um... I think I did. I think I liked it more, more because I was I was new to it, and I wanted to um, you know experience being in all all the different uh, spots in a UNSC clan. All right. So what happened uh, after basically you were done with Navcom? <sighs> um, after Navcom. After Navcom, I think I went back to Halo 4 and no, did I? Yeah, I think I went back to Halo 4 and I was in um, General Chariot's clan which was United Fleet Federation um, and I made it to a uh, field marshal there which is the highest rank you could achieve and uh, I was trying to turn things around because the clan wasn't that disciplined and then I left um, after I think maybe two, two and a half months I left. Um, and then I think I went back to Halo Reach and I think I went to 16th Fleet. I know I'm forgetting some clans. This, this might be all jumbled up, but I think I, I went to a clan called 16th Fleet after. All right. Um, so, do you remember your experience within 16th Fleet, or no? I do. It was, uh, uh, ODSTM Stackers Clan. And, um, it was okay. Um, it was my second UNSC clan. Um, and I was the Marine CO. Again, that's, that's all I've ever been, ODST, for the two weeks, or Marine CO. Um, and it was okay. I mean, I still... I don't know why I did. I still went for more people rather than, you know, 10 guys who were, you know, in perfect, 
perfect um, perfect people. All right. So, is there? There's it's you obviously been in a lot of clans. What it was your main reason for like leaving most of these clans? Um, the people above me either treated me poorly, or um, they were abusing their own power um, and weren't, you know, listening to their own rules that they set in place for their clan. So, either favoritism or um, abuse of power. Alright. So, after the 16th Fleet, was there another clan you joined? Or there was obviously another clan you joined. Yeah. But what clan was it? 16th Fleet. So, that was a year ago, after I first joined 16th Fleet. Um, after that, where did I go? I think I joined, um, I forgot their name, but I was only there for, for a couple hours. I joined in and, and, uh, I was a Marine recruit and the, the DI there lined us all up. He was really strict, like probably the most strict DI I've ever met on reach and he made us sing, and I was like, "Hell no, I'm not singing." So I left. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. So what was another clan that you joined? <laughs> um, another clan. After that day experience. <laughs> um, let's see. I think I don't know. I probably should have written, because when I write down all the clans that I was in, it would have been easier for me to go off and tell you my experiences in all of them. Um, but I was in, um, man, where did I go? I think I might have I started my own clan again. So let's talk about a bit more recent. I believe a couple months you were in another clan called the United Nations Strike Force, a UNSC clan. Yeah, I left that clan this month on the seventh. All right. What exactly happened within that clan? Because I didn't really hear about it that much in the UNSC community. Yeah, that clan was okay. So before, so this was more than this was about um, seven months ago. Seven months ago, I was on, on four, so I must have went... Oh, that's right. I went back to Chariot's clan. was in there, and then I, I went back to Reach. Um, and I was looking for clans to join. And um, I saw two clan pictures on the file share. And, <laughs> and the first one that I saw was this UNSC clan. And I'm going to tell you this because I think it's really funny. And this this was before joining UNSF, and this um, it was a really cool picture. So I messaged the uh, the, the author of it, and said, "Hey, I want to join." And so he invites me to this game, and I spawn in this little box on the coastline, and they're running people through, and I'm like, "Hey, I'd like to join your clan." And this Spartan is like, "Wait a second, are you Nicholas Strauss?" And I'm like, "Uh, yeah," and he's like. You can't let this guy join the clan. And he's talking to this other guy who I guess was the host. And I'm like, whoa, 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 I just want to join your clan. What's what's the matter? That was like a year ago. And he's like, no, you cannot let Triadic join our clan. He's really bad. And I was just there kind of blown away. Like, th that was the first time anyone's ever told me you can't join the clan because of your past. And... I said, you know, I, I just just give me a chance, you know, um, and they and then they booted me, and then I was like, all right, so I guess I'm not joining that clan. So I I look at the other picture, and truly divine, that's the leader of UNSF. He's the author. I message him. He doesn't respond. <laughs> he respond. It, it takes him like three days to respond, but he finally does. I get brought through boot camp. Uh, do you want to know like the full story on this, or are you looking for the shorter version? I'm looking for. It's it's pretty long. Are you sure? It's all right. We'll see. Okay. Sorry. All right. All right. So, um, okay. So I message him. He gets me in the in the boot camp. First impression of the clan. It sucked. 
I was I was like, all right, these kids don't know what they're doing. I was in there with ten other recruits. We were on this really easy boot camp, and um, it was like it was a couple of parkour jumps over some one by one blocks or something in the water. So if you fell off, you died. And I was there, and it was completely unorganized. All these other nine kids were screaming and trying to jump over the blocks and you know, pushing me in the water and I was getting pissed off and 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 the the leader wasn't helping and that was truly divine and his officers weren't really doing anything. And uh they actually ended it before I could complete the course. So I actually never even officially completed the boot camp, but I still got in. And then uh we went to lobby and uh and uh the they were setting me up. It was really confusing. I actually skipped two ranks and went straight to private because nobody told me anything. They didn't even like tell me, you know, what was going on. Um, so it's probably one of the worst first day clan experiences I've ever had. Um, and I was in there, and and we they were mostly active on the weekends at the time, and they only did team tack, um, which is fine. But every single time we played Team Tac, and this was I was a private. Um, every single time, I was always voted the team leader. Like every time, even if Truly was there or the other officers, it was always me. And I kicked the other team's ass, and that was fun. Um, I got to like PFC the second day I joined, and then I got to Lance Corporal a couple days later. And then after Lance Corporal, there was a meeting, and Truly Divine. At, at that time, I'd ran one training, and um, and it was it was just a small little like little six person training, um, and so the meeting. So, <coughs> excuse me. So, um, he's talking about having squads, and he comes to me, and he says, "Do you want to be a squad leader?" And I'm like, "Well, you know, sure." Um, and he said, okay, so you're Master Sergeant. So I went from Lance Corporal to Master Sergeant, skipped, you know, a couple of ranks, was in there for like two weeks, um, and my squad was Red Squad. And at that time, there were a lot of uh, a lot of officers in the clan, a lot of lieutenants, and my impressions from them was, or, well, my impression from the clan after being in there those weeks was they were in the stick age, so to speak, right? They were, like, brand new. Like, he was like, you know, this was 2014, so take it back three years. That's what kind of clan it was. Like, they didn't know really anything about anybody. They weren't a part of the bigger community either, which I thought was kind of weird. But um, I led Red Squad. Red Squad was the best squad with the most people. And I was just, I was being, I was just, I was amazing. <laughs> um, and um, and the other, there were two other uh, squad leaders, and they were, uh, they weren't doing so well. So I said, you know what? Can I just be the leader of the Marines? And at that time, truly divine, he was the leader of the Marines. And I, and and he, um, he he assigned the three master sergeants as the leader of the Marines. There were three of us leading the branch. Um, and really at that time we just ran our own squads we didn't really have full power of the marine branch um but i said hey you know i think i should be the the overall leader because i'm the most active my squad's the best um and so he was like all right so i was like okay so i guess i'm, I'm the marine co and after at that point i had been in four four uh um three or four unsc clans and all the times I had been the Marine CO, so I knew exactly what to do, how to build the perfect branch. But I didn't, I wasn't given all of the tools and all of the authority. It was kind of like, here, you could be the Marine CO, but we're not going to give you everything you need, sort of a thing, because they didn't know me. That's, that's what they said. Um, but let's fast forward. So I was the Marine CO. I finally got all the authority after. A couple of council meetings. I said, you know what? You need to give me all, all, you know, all the authority because I know what I'm doing. So just, you know, you know. Um, and I finally fought for all my rights as Maurizio. 
Yeah, that was at that point. I was in the clan for maybe a month and a half, um, and there I was leading my Marines. We had 25 Marines. I was doing really, really good. I was building up my NCOs and my future officers. Um, my uh, my XO LJ Rocks 96. He was amazing. I had to mention his name in this because he was he was really good. Um, and at that point, my branch was the best branch in the entire clan. It's, we outdid the special forces by a stretch. Um, and the ODSTs were led by um, UNSC Infinity, who changed his name to ODST J Locke. And um, he didn't really know what he was doing. He was he was more or less there because he was friends with Truly, and that was the first time that I saw favoritism between Truly and and this guy. But um, I'll tell you now, before I'm you know done with this this story, um, there were there were so many times that I was so close to leaving the clan throughout the seven months, but I didn't. And I waited, and I said just a little bit longer because I wanted to help the clan, because they were still in the stick age, and I was, you know, I had been in so many more clans than these guys did, and I all I wanted to do was help the clan and grow it, um, and hopefully make it, you know, a more well-known UNSC clan. So that's that's one of the other reasons I joined them and stayed there after that terrible boot camp. Um, so so I noticed that the ODSTs weren't doing very well. And I brought it up to the leader, and he didn't, he didn't really do anything to change it. I thought, you know, he'd have a talk about it or a council meeting or whatever, but nothing really was done. Um, and let's see, fast forward in another month or so, uh, Marines are still the best branch. We're doing everything right. Um, at that point, I had a couple NCOs. I did some NCO school, uh, which went, went really, really well. And I was just building up my branch, and um, and then the ODSTs came along, and I thought this was the funniest thing. But in one of our council meetings, right, the ODST leader. So okay, so their issue was they didn't have any ODSTs, and there I was with like thirty Marines. So they said in the council meeting, they said, "All right, Triadic, I think that." we should allow people when they first join the clan to first come join the ODSTs because at the time I ensured it, I made the system so that the, the new recruits who join the Marines first and then if they, you know, did well in the Marines, they could transfer to the other branches. That's how I thought everything should work out. So um, they came and they said, they, they said, you know what, I think we should let it be so that the new recruits can join the ODSTs first and then, if they fail our boot camp, they can go down to the Marines. Do you get Do you get what I mean there? Yes. So they were going to take our recruits and bring them to the Special Forces branch first, and then and their discipline was less than mine. You know that they weren't as strict as me. So I had a huge issue with that. And um, long story short, that the, it didn't get passed because I was. Even though I was the only one that said no to it, and everybody else said yes, somehow I still got it to be not passed, the or got it not to be passed, um, and that was just many. That was just one of many hurdles that I had there. Um, truly, and at this point, he's he's not um, he's not as experienced as the people that I started to deal with starting in like 2013 um, so we uh, we butted heads quite a few times and um, and uh, the ODSTs didn't like me at all and um, and they just uh, and at, let's see this was probably five months in um, I uh, I brought it up to the to the uh, truly, I said, you know what? Hey, let me take over the ODSTs because they're too terrible, and I'm doing well, right? It, it made it made perfect sense to me, right? Because I was doing so well with my branch, why not let me go work on the ODSTs and help them out? And it was it was turned down. Um, he uh, he was too stuck with with Infinity, doing.
doing it, even though he wasn't doing anything. So, um, and then at that point, uh, Naomi, do you know her? Not really. No? Wow. Um, well, she is, apparently, she's a really big UNSC person, and she was in, like, the original nav spec war or something s2 she was like original spartan 2 or something and these these guys all the leaders in the unsf idled her like they put her on a pedestal right it was like she was the god so she joined the clan went straight to spartans broke the rule <laughs> as she went straight to spartans and she caused so many issues in the clan um and it ticked me off, and, and we decided to, and she manipulated the president, and she manipulated uh, so many people, and she almost destroyed the clan. She poached people from my branch and brought them to hers without permission, and she was, she was you know, destroying the clan. And so I brought it up, let's kick her out. Well, there was a, a miscommunication with that. She ended up just leaving instead. And uh, we'll fast forward here. We're we're at six and a half months. No, we're at about about six months. Um, she um, she came back. They they let her back in the clan. Like a month after, a month and a half after she left, we were going to kick her out for almost destroying our clan, what we had built up. Truly, let her back. Because he was friends with her. And she was friends with the odious TXO. Who was who was the, who then became the CEO. Well, I guess he was the CEO at the time. She was friends with all these people, all these high ups, you know, my fellow officers, and so she got back in the clan and that irritated me. And um there was just and there was somebody named Robert. Robert was uh truly divine's cousin. And he was in the clan and truly showed favoritism to him all the time. And there was nothing I could do about it. And they were just kind of on like their own little friend zone. The the Marines, the Sparns, truly led the Sparns too. He opened up his own branch and led the Sparns. And he took away time from leading the clan to just leading his branch. And that hurt the clan. And after all of that, after all the favoritism and them breaking their own rules and I was just there trying to help them and nobody would listen to me I said you know what I'm not gonna do this anymore I'm gonna leave so um, so I left on uh, on April 7th which was 23 days ago right yeah and um, and after I left nine days after I left Truly Divine ended the clan because he couldn't take the stress of being the only leader. Alright. So, you created your own clan afterwards, right? Yes. What is your current clan called? It's called Stargate Command. Alright, and why, what inspired you to name it that? Uh, actually, about a year and a half ago, I I was, I don't know, I I probably, I'm pretty sure I was in um, Chariot's clan. And while being in his clan, I thought, you know what? I'd like to lead one last clan. Like the last clan that I'd ever be in and reach, I'd like to lead it. And I, and I want to take all of my experience and everything from it and put it into that clan. And I just, I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. I was just, you know, sitting in my chair and just thinking of, of names. And I knew it couldn't be United Nations something because that is completely overused, um, you know, having the United Nations in front of the, in front of the name. Um, and I just, I don't even know. I know there's a show. I now know there's a show called Stargate, which I never even knew. But um, it just kind of came to me, I guess. And I said, you know what, that this is what... I'm going to name my clan whenever I decide that that's going to be it. So I wrote up a bunch of things, and this was a year and a half ago. Of course, I don't use the same things that I wrote up then, but um, but yeah. So how many members does your clan officially have right now, Stargate Command? Officially, we have 49. 49? And how, is, there, is there basically a lot of activity within your own clan? There is. Um, 
I try to do trainings every single day of the week. Um, on Monday we had a full lobby. Um, you know, the weekend, of course, we had a full lobby, and you know, plus of people who were waiting to join our game. But um, as far as I mean, usually there's a couple of off days. It's, it's weird, you know. T- uh, this week it'll be tomorrow that we won't have anybody on, even though it's a Friday, and then next week it'll be like a Wednesday where we don't have anybody on. But for the most part, we're very active. So, was there is there any major wars or events that you participated within your own clan as it is right now, or even in like your old clan, the UNS? UNSF. Yeah. Uh, in the UNSF, we fought. Uh, let me see. What was his name? Man, I really. What was his name? We fought. We fought a lot of people. Um, I don't think I can remember his name, but. Um, he was, hold on a second, um, wait, one second. All right, sorry about that. Um, I can't remember his name, but he was, uh, he was kind of like the Joker today. He was, he was a troll sort of a guy, wasn't very serious, um, and, uh, we fought them and it, it ended very quickly. Um, we, uh. We took over their base, you know, and, the, and then they ended the war, <laughs> like, the same day. But there weren't, we, the, the UNSF was kind of, like, under the blanket. Like, we didn't really want anybody to know about us. Like, that was my plan, at least, for the, for the UNSF. I didn't want anybody to know that the UNSF, or anybody, you know, big that really mattered in the larger community, to know that the UNSF was there. Oh, we fought Exodus. That's, that's something important i guess um um and i just wanted you know us to be down in our own little world so we could just do what we had to do and not be bothered by anything else hello hello my bad anyways (laughs) uh we're gonna ask a couple of questions and it's going to be towards the end of this video, but which community do you prefer better? The UNSC or the military community? Military. Alright. Uh, and what is your favorite clan out of all these clans you've been in over these past years? Um, can I do top three? Yes. Okay. Uh, United Factions, United Nations, and United Nations Republic. Uh, so is there anything else you'd like to cover before the end of this interview? Um, no. I think it's been pretty long. All right. Now, for this last question I'm going to ask you, I ask it usually to a lot of people, and that is, how do you believe the Halo clan, clan community could grow and prosper from, like, all these events and clans you've been in? Like, any advice you could give? Um... I think that it's important that the newer clans and the newer leaders that have popped up, um, I think it's important that you listen and, and take a moment to to talk to some of the people who've been here for five, six, seven, eight, nine years and see, you know, their failures and see and, you know, talk to them about, well, how did your clan become really successful? I think it's really important that they understand that we've already done so much more than what you know the newer people have done already, and I think I think they should be more uh, what's the word be more open to learning from others. All right, uh, I'd like to thank you for coming on this interview, Triadic. Thank you for having me. All right. If you guys enjoyed this video or have any questions, leave it down in the comments below. I'm not sure if you'll be reading any of them. Uh, yeah, I'll read them. All right. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed, also like this video, and I'll talk to you guys all later. Bye.